Hello, sports fans! Welcome to the Broadcast Booth. I'm Jason Aaron Goldberg, and this is Card Collecting Shenanigans. While you're here, hope you'll subscribe. It's Mail Drop Monday, and we've got a vintage crop today. Welcome back, everybody. I took last week off. Uh, I had been planning to do that because I knew baseball was starting this week. So I thought, hey, I'll take the previous week off. Uh, and, you know, just kind of rest up and relax. And then, unfortunately, on Monday, Gorgeous George, the cutest pup of all time, who has his own playlist on the channel, spiked a pretty serious fever, wound up having to go into the vet, uh, was on IV fluids and antibiotics Wednesday night uh, through Thursday. But he is back home now. He's on a little pill regimen of antibiotics. But he is, you know, returning to his normal rascal behavior. Uh, I want to thank everybody that reached out to me last week, just kind of inquiring about where I was and everything was okay. Uh, so really appreciate that from Fab Subs. But we are back. Baseball is back. I've had a really good time watching some of these summer tune-up games. I know Aaron Judge is excited to be back because he hit two bombs yesterday. Yankees looking scary good. Uh, so that's why Aaron Judge is in the dugout today for the two taters. Uh, the Yankees are just raking. Jordan Montgomery, the fifth starter, looking like an ace. Watch out. It's going to be scary. Uh, let's go 60-0, and 0, Yankees. Uh, by the time this episode goes live, I'll probably be hunkered down watching the final tune-up game of summer, uh, the Yankees-Phillies game. Uh, but uh, So let's get into the vintage. There's an empty spot in the dugout because this first package right here, this first card is the card that's going to go there because... Nice. 1969 tops Mel Stottlemyre because on this day in 1965, Mel Stottlemyre hit, yes, you heard that, hit an inside the park grand slam in Yankee Stadium against the Red Sox. Now, back in 65, Yankee Stadium was a big ballpark. It's still a pretty big ballpark, uh, but back in the day, it was massive. And he hit the ball to left center. Roughly anywhere you put it out in left center was over 450 feet. Uh, so Mel Stottlemyre motoring, driving in Joe Pepitone, among a couple other guys, inside the park, grand slam. I think the only pitcher to ever do it. Back of it, hot pink. I would say this is probably second printing. It's not quite as hot pink as uh, some of the other ones. I'd have to sort of compare them, uh, but... Pretty close, pretty close. And, of course, you know I, I do love that 1965, 69 tops. All right, let's get Mel in the dugout. I was on a vintage kick because, uh, you know, there was no retail. There was nothing to buy. I wound up splurging before George went into the doggy hospital and got a hobby box, uh, pre-ordered a hobby box of Topps Archives and Ginter Chrome. So that was kind of a big purchase. And then, of course, George's vet bill was rather substantial. Uh, so I was like, oh, I got to go back on the card budget. And then today I wound up getting an email from Topps that I had entered into the raffle to get one of those Topps finest hobby boxes for $55. They're going on eBay for about $400, and I got picked. So I did pick up one of those. Uh, and uh, so we'll have that hopefully pretty soon. Should be a really fun rip. Like a hawk did a rip of it. Uh, it, it was a lot of fun. The cards are just really, really pretty. Uh, okay, so this first card we're going to take out of this is a pickup of a little bit of my uh, social justice awareness card uh, splurge that I was on. I'll get into why it's relevant. Uh, so Elston Howard picked this up. Uh, obviously going to go into the uh, the joint father-son Yankee PC. Uh Elson Howard considered one of the all-time great Yankees, and the reason he's relevant is he is the first black Yankee ever. Uh, he has a lot of firsts, actually. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the great Elston Howard. Uh, he was uh, picked up by the Yankees out of the Negro Leagues. Basically, he was a great athlete, football scholarships, all kinds of, you know, people paying attention to just how good he was at multiple sports. Yankees wound up picking him up from the Kansas City Monarchs in 1950. Now, he signed with the Monarchs in 48 at only 19. He foregoed football, all that sort of stuff, and played with the Monarchs. His roommate with the Monarchs was Ernie Banks. How cool is that? Uh, so the Yankees picked him up in 1950, and in 51-52, he, he's in the Army. Uh, he's in the minor leagues. He winds up coming up to the Yankees in 55, and he's basically a backup catcher left fielder at that time because Berra is still, you know, Yogi Berra. But, so this card is 1964 tops large. 
In 63, he becomes the MVP of the league. Again, a first first black player to win the most valuable player in the AL. And then, uh, you know, his career, again, really, really strong. Uh, 12-time All-Star, four-time World Series champion as a player, two times as a coach because 1969-79, to he was the first base coach for the Yankees and, again, the first black coach in the American League. Uh, He unfortunately passed away at only 51 years old of myocarditis, which is a heart condition. He was maybe going to get a heart transplant, but his his condition just deteriorated really quickly, and so unfortunately he passed away. But the Yankees retired as number 32 in 1984. He's got a plaque out in Monument Park. And two fun facts, invented the batter's donut. The weighted donut, uh, you can credit Elson Howard for that. Also in my quick research, he invented this, calling two outs this way. You know, because he, he was realizing this is harder for the outfielders to see. So he is the guy, first guy to do this, the bull. Very cool. Fun facts on Elston Howard. All right, so a little more vintage here before we close out our episode. You know I'm a Mickey McDermott collector. Uh, I'm trying to pick up every one of his cards. Uh, and I keep thinking I have them all. And then I'm like, wait, no, I, I don't have this one. So I got this one. I think I, it was only about 11 bucks. Uh, so if you can get a slabbed vintage card, you know, 52 Bowman for almost the price of getting it slapped, why not? Really well centered. I was looking at three versions of this. Uh, Grab this one because I like the centering the most. It's got a little bit of a rough corner here, but that's about it uh, in terms of the corner uh, work. You know, it's not rounded. They're pretty sharp, pretty clean. You can really see it on the back here. The original Nuke La La Louche. Mickey McDermott. Childhood meeting. Now I PC him. Set them over here with our masked players from 1919. Wear your mask, everybody. For the good of all mankind. Okay, so this is just a lot of Greg Morris cards. Nothing crazy. Uh, I was on the vintage kick when I couldn't find anything to rip. Uh, And so these are just a couple fun cards that I picked up. Still hoping to do a J. Johnstone OT Retro. Uh... Saw this one in there. Just thought the condition was spectacular. Uh, For 68 tops, almost dead centered. Really great color. Super sharp corners. Not a lot of people chasing Jay Johnstone cards, but that's part of the fun of the hobby, people. It's not always about money or, you know, your quote-unquote investment strategy of cards. It's just, you know, guys that you enjoyed watching as a kid or weird guys, and Jay Johnstone was a fun-loving kind of weird dude. Uh, So... I pick up his cards when I can. I've got a number of them. I'm getting close to doing that OT retro. I apologize to my Red Sox fans because I wind up picking up cards and I think, okay, I'm going to send this to you know one of my fab sub Red Sox fans. And then I wind up keeping it because it somehow fits into my PC like this one because I just love 72 tops. And when you can get them in really good condition, you know, why not? And so this guy is just in great shape, really well uh centered by and large for 72 they're kind of hit or miss you know it's a little bit off and a little bit off top to bottom but you know we're we're still getting good white border uh and so for this set one of the things that's tough is keeping the really vibrant colors you know in the 70s people weren't paying that much attention to their cards so you might see some yellowing or some fading or they get really dinged up so when i saw this grabbed it uh sparky rocking some really good sideburns right there uh, so it'll wind up staying in the PC. But I did pick up some Red Sox cards for, you know, folks. Hopefully I'll be able to get them out to people eventually. Uh, pick this one up because 55 Tops is one of my favorite sets artistically. Uh, it is uh, one of the sets they're doing in archives this year, which was the reason I got that uh, Hobby Box pre-order. Uh, and so I'm excited to see who they're, you know, who gets the 55 design. Uh, but it's just a beautiful set. Beautiful, beautiful set. Really great color on this. Always love the cartoons on the back. The longest scoreless tie ever played went 19 innings. Which two teams played in it? Cincinnati and Brooklyn. Just a really great one to go into the uh, the Yankee PC for me and my dad. Uh, also picked up this one. I think this is probably my third 53 tops Mickey McDermott. Uh, I picked up another Mickey McDermott card that I didn't have. I'll show that later in the week. 
but 53 is just one of my all-time favorite sets artistically. Every card was, you know, a hand-painted uh, piece, and they're just stunning. Again, oversized. Those early 50s are, you know, a little oversized, but a great one. So I picked this one up. Maybe I'll try to send it to a Red Sox fan. Uh, you know, I try to do that a little bit. I just think it's fun to share a little vintage with people when, uh, when possible. Uh, so there you go. Just some fun vintage pickups. Hope everybody is as excited as I am for baseball to be back watching baseball. It's going to be like almost every day we'll have baseball games. The sprint is going to be wild. It's really anybody's game. Uh, I'm excited for it. So leave a comment, everybody. Let me know what you thought of today's episode. Looking forward to reading those. Slam that like button. Make sure you're subscribed. Tell all your friends. And I'll see you next time in the broadcast booth.